I'm really excited. A couple weeks ago, I closed on a neighboring wetland. So to our south, uh, the neighbor sold 339 acres of WRP, and I was able to add that to what we have here. So now Jared and I have over 550 acres right here of this wetland habitat. And uh, that's gonna really uh, help us in our management strategies and keep some of these deer alive and, and uh, letting them grow up over a few years. So Jared and I and some of the guys came out in March and we did a little shed hunting. We unfortunately did not find Merino, but we did find a couple match sets of some of our younger, uh, better deer. One of them is the broken four-year-old. You guys will recognize this deer. We saw this deer a bunch of times. This is the one that uh, snort wheezed under Jared's stand. And it was actually a buck that I had an encounter with my last sit after Marino. He walked in to 20 yards. And we saw him multiple times throughout the year. Beautiful deer. He's actually sort of reminiscent of Marino's rack. And uh, we're really looking forward to see what he's gonna turn into next year. He got busted up, but he's got really long beams. And he's about a low 160s, mid 160s last year as a, as a four year old. So we moved into this area that you've heard me refer to as the skinny pinch. Uh, this is my favorite area on the farm to hunt. It's not so much the tree, uh, even though we've had a lot of success out of the tree, but it's really just the area. And what makes it good is it's just a natural funnel. This is actually uh, the tree that we often hunt out of here over my shoulder. Uh, the previous landowner was a traditional archer and he had this stand hung. It's kind of grew into the tree and so he didn't take it down. So that broken four-year-old, um, this is the tree that Jared encountered him out of when he snort weeds under the tree. He had multiple encounters with Merino out of this tree. And you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big cottonwood. It's a split trunk cottonwood. So there's not a lot of cover on it, but it's really in a good spot. There's only a little bit of distance between us and the slough. So not many deer walk on that end. And there's two primary trails here, one at 15 yards and one at 30 yards. Back again. Just wrapping up a day's work here at the River Bottom Farm. This is gonna be my last work day before the whitetail season opens for me here in Iowa. I'm heading out west to New Mexico next weekend on an elk hunt. I'm gonna be gone for two weeks. So I'm pretty pumped up about that. Chase some bugling bulls. And then when I get back, the urban zone is gonna be open on September 12th. So next time you see me, I'll be in a tree. Hey guys, it's a Saturday, October 10th, and Chase and I are set up on the River Bottom Farm. We are on a doe mission tonight. It is hot, 80 degrees, and we're set up on the edge of the farm. We don't have a lot of targets here on the River Bottom Farm this year. Our primary target, or the deer I'm most excited about, is Merino. We got Merino back. It's our fourth year of history with them. Still waiting on this broken four-year-old, the one that um, snort wheezed under Jared last year in late October and we had probably 10 encounters with him for the year. I actually had him come under me the very last set of the year and he's one of the bucks that I'm most excited to find back this year on this farm. Hopefully he made a big jump. He was he was like a low 160s type deer. So I'm primarily hunting those tonight. Just gonna sit back and enjoy the enjoy the evening.
him right behind that green bush. He's about to pop out right here. There he is. Behind that dead tree. <laughs> about 9 15 and uh, we're just getting a break in the action it is saturday october 24th it is a cold high pressure morning it's a beautiful morning in the woods it's about uh 30 degrees or so and we have a light north wind and chase and i are set up down on our river bottom farm we've had a steady trickle of deer younger bucks and does and fawns my primary uh, target as most of you know on this farm is merino he's been on and off the farm a little bit and then we finally got pictures of that uh, broken four-year-old. He's moved back in. We're calling him Dak. He's a really nice looking deer. He didn't grow a ton from last year, but he's just a solid deer. We had tons of encounters with him last year and he, he grew a big uh, second brow on that left side. So it'd be pretty cool to see either one of those deer. We're setting up in my, my favorite time of year to hunt this last week of October. I've got a couple days off this week and a, a bunch of afternoons where I'll get out of work early and try to get in the woods. So, Looking forward to the next few weeks of hunting. about 11 o'clock we've seen a few more deer but the wind is going to start switching from north to east and the east blows like straight back into the bedding so i want to get down and uh, pull a few cards pull that home camera and come up with a plan for this afternoon encounter number one with Dak, one of our target bucks. He totally caught us off guard here. We had just finished packing up. I just looked up and about 9,500 yards off. I could see a deer standing there. It looked like a mature buck. I got him in the binos and uh, definitely a mature buck. Couldn't really see his rack, but I thought it was Dak. And I don't think we really spooked him. I think he heard us packing up but um, 
he couldn't see us. And so he just was looking alert this direction. We were able to carefully get the camera back out on the arm and get my uh, get an arrow knocked. And he walked straight towards us. And uh, he went to that, right behind that same scrape that those other bucks worked this morning. And the closest he got was 55 yards. I thought he was gonna come right down this trail where that doe came earlier today. And he turned and he, he went back into the uh, peninsula. When he started walking away, I wait till he got in the brush where he couldn't see over here. And I tried snort wheezing back behind us. He stopped and looked, but uh, he kept walking off. So I need to look at the wind and kind of figure out where I want to sit tonight. But I was, my plan was to try to catch deer movement out of the peninsula tonight. Such a classic movement pattern out here. Hopefully he's relaxed and stays back in here and we can see him again tonight. Chase and I are all set up for the afternoon hunt. We've only moved a few hundred yards. We had an awesome sit this morning at the neck of the peninsula uh, here on the River Bottom Farm. We've got a lot of pictures of Dak back in the peninsula. And obviously we saw him this morning at 11.15, so my hope is that tonight he um, just feeds his way out right in front of us here at 20 yards. With any luck, he'll pass by tonight. Just had a encounter number two for the day with Dak. The wind got us. Um, he was just coming out of the peninsula just like I wanted him to do. And most of the deer, we have a camera right here because most of the deer, they come right on this real heavy worn trail around this little grass patch. I've seen over the years plenty of times them walk through the grass. In fact, that's what Gronk did the morning I shot him. But I have a hole here with the east wind. They basically, by the time they hit our wind, I could shoot him. Unfortunately, he got to about 60. He looked like he was coming down this trail and then he turned. He got to about 60 and the wind kind of swirled or we got a little gust like straight out of the north. And he got our wind, he, he hit the brakes right away and he turned around and went back. Pretty cool to see him. Morning and afternoon, he's obviously in here. I think if we, uh, Keep hunting in here, we'll get another chance at him. <laughs> all right, well, we're all set up for the afternoon. We've slid down the slough just a couple hundred yards. We're back in the skinny pinch. First hunt of the year out of this tree. I love this spot. As we talked about this morning, my primary target on this farm is Marino, though he's not been around. So Dak is my other target, and I think we have a chance at him. Saturday night, we were hunting just across the way, about 60 yards, and we had him coming in. I think if he's bedding in the peninsula, he likes to come out through the skinny pinch. Weather feels awesome. Hopefully they move well.
Good morning. It's November 3rd. We're set up down at the River Bottom Farm again today. I'm in the same stand I hunted yesterday. We're back at the head of the slough. We have a really light southwest wind. It's really quiet and still this morning. It's about 36 degrees. I went back and forth all night trying to decide between hunting the pinch or the head of the slough. The advantage of the pinch is if deer come through there, they're likely to be in bow range. And all the deer coming back to the peninsula from the north tend to go through there. I don't get the conditions that I like to hunt this stand super often. In my opinion, the best time to hunt this stand is with essentially no wind in the morning. Because when the sun comes up and the thermals rise, it just takes your scent straight up. Uh, this stand has a very high likelihood of having deer on all sides of you. And also DAC has been a little more active on the south end of the peninsula than on the north end. So all of those things uh, led me to come in here. So we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. Hopefully DAC or Marino make an appearance this morning. There's a bunch of them, man. another good encounter with Dak. It had been slow for the previous hour or so. And I was just getting ready to get down. I need to go vote. And I gotta get back to work tomorrow. So we were gonna hunt closer to home. And uh, Chase said he had been seeing for, what, 15, 20 minutes, some antlers, what he thought was antlers, moving in the brush about 100 yards away. Thought maybe it was a buck bedded, so I was glassing in there, never could see him. And I just decided to throw out a few grunts. And uh, right away, came out of the brush and we could see it was him. I never noticed that there was a doe and a fawn. I'm still not sure if she was bedded with him or if uh, she just happened to be coming back into the bedding area. Because he walked out and it looked like he was going to come just perfect on this side of the tree upwind. 
And then next thing you know, I heard Chase say, there's a doe. And at that point, she'd already picked off, picked us off from the tree right here. So as opposed to coming in, she kind of started working off. She wasn't sure what we were, but she, uh, you could tell she was nervous. And she ended up just getting far enough where she got downwind of us. And so she um, went back to the east and he followed her. It's cool to see him, but I'm tired of seeing him. I want to get him in bow range. It's November 7th. Chase and I are set up down at the River Bottom Farm. I'm hoping to run into Dak back here. This has been his spot. We've encountered him twice out of this tree. We're at the uh, neck of this peninsula, which is basically all bedding area. It seemed like Dak was locked down with this doe in this area the last two to three days. So I'm not sure, you know, if we'll see him or not, but he was here yesterday morning. It's Sunday, November 8th, and Chase and I are set up. It's warm again today. It's like 57 degrees this morning when we got here. And it's supposed to warm up to the mid 70s again. And we're trying something a little bit different. I've never hunted this spot on the river bottom farm before. But uh, cameras and off season scouting have uh, told me that this is an area where you can certainly have a good hunt in the morning. I've also got Dak on camera right here. I don't think anything's been in daylight, but we're close enough to this thicket and bedding area that he certainly could be with a doe or cruising through here mid-morning. It's Wednesday, November 18th. Chase and I are back down at the River Bottom Farm. I'm doing something a little bit different this morning. I'm in here after DAC. We've hunted the head of the slough quite a few times and countered him a few times out of that stand. And um, that stand doesn't work really well for a southeast, plus I just wanted to try something a little bit different. He, he seems to be moving primarily east and west uh, through our farm, and so I've moved about 90 yards east of the slough and hung this set this morning. And hopefully Dak makes an appearance. That's a wrap for the 2020 season. Uh, another nice night in the blind. Unfortunately, another shooter showed up tonight. Just lots and lots of young bucks. I think we had 12 or so one, two, and three year old bucks out here. So I'm already dreaming about what uh, Tex will look like next year and some of the bucks down the river bottom farm, Dak and that double beam buck and the crab claw 10. Excited to see what they'll be and uh, excited for shed season. And these last few weeks, I've been really thinking about all the off-season projects we need to get done. So, time to start thinking and planning on that. Uh, we really appreciate you guys' support this year and look forward to catching up with you in the off-season. Well, it's kind of a nasty, rainy day here in Iowa, but good conditions for finding sheds. I love this rainy type weather, dark sky. So we are heading down to the river farm and to my knowledge, no one's been here in a number of months, really since probably late December, early January. So. I have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea how many deer really uh, spent time there during the shed season or how many antlers we'll find, but I'm excited to get back down there and check things out. It's a real good one. Man, the base looks huge from here. Is that Dak? That's Dak. <laughs> Is Dak that big? As you guys can see, we've been getting a lot of work done down here at the river farm. And all of this is just better to strategize and uh, come in after some of these different bucks. You know, the buck I'm most interested in is Dak. I had a few close calls with him last year. I think the best place to catch up with that deer is either in the pinch or the head of the slough. Um, you guys saw me hunting there a bunch last, and that's last year, and that's where we've encountered him quite a few times the last two years. You guys saw that we picked up his shed earlier in the year 
and uh, this is the first time I have the two sheds side by side. We have his match set from the year before uh, DAC. You know, this is from 2019, right about 160-ish. And then just to show sort of the growth and what he did, I mean, made a big jump, beautiful deer. And I'm really excited to find him back this year. You know, he normally doesn't show up here until about mid-October. We have every reason to believe, obviously, he's alive and can't wait to see what he looks like this year. It's Sunday, October 31st, and Ryan and I have made the move down to the River Bottom Farm. We are in the pinch set. I actually had dinner with Jared last night, and he told me that he saw Dak out in the willows. So it is cool to have our first encounter with him this year and know that he's, you know, daylight active. We're gonna get quiet and enjoy the rest of the morning. Hopefully, the action continues. What well, is Saturday, November 13th? Ryan and I are still riding high after taking down Chubbs on the 10th. Lots of happy thoughts and feelings since that day. Today we are down on the river bottom farm. We're in the pinch. Primary target for me is Dak. He was here just on the home camera and kind of running through this area back. It's been about 10 days ago. Jared pulled cards on November 8th. You know, he was nocturnal a couple times, but Jared's been sitting out here, kind of trying out different areas on the farm the last week and hasn't seen Dak or Marino, so I'm not sure what the chances are, but we're just gonna sit back and quiet and enjoy the morning. Wednesday, November 17th. And Ryan and I are set up down at the River Bottom Farm. We're back in the pinch. We've got a west-northwest wind. It's about 14 miles per hour. It's supposed to get a little more gusty midday today. In here after Dak or Marino. Neither one of them have been very active on the farm, but I figured if they're still alive, this is a good spot to catch up with them. And history made me want to come back to this spot because in first year we owned this farm in 2017 had Marino walk under the stand on November 17th and so I was contemplating all the different options with this wind it's like oh, I gotta go back and sit right there just in case he doesn't come through the pinch much anymore these days he seems to stay on the off the farm primarily but you never know we've had two bucks walk by a young tin and then that broken G2 buck that we filmed a few times. They just came through about 15 minutes ago. We'll sit in here for a few hours and hopefully have a good hunt. What? <laughs> what? What? 
Are you kidding? November 17th, baby. Are you kidding me? Dude. I'm out of my mind here. Struggling to even want to stay in the stand. I'm going to get so slow. God. Dude. I hear leaves crunching. I turn around. And... All I can see is that right antler. And I'm just like, what deer is that? I just see, it's, I'm thinking immediately it's a shooter. <laughs> Giant eight point side. <laughs> he takes a couple steps, I'm like, oh my God, it's Dak. <laughs> Dak! <laughs> Dak! <laughs> it's sort of a lackadaisical hunt. We just like come just sit out happy. here, <laughs> we're hanging out. Oh. The pinch, sometimes they make it easy. He just walks up. I don't really know what to say here. It's like, I'd rather be lucky than good, I guess. I was telling Rye earlier this morning, my, my head's not really in it today. I just, things have been crazy at work the last couple days and at the house, got all sorts of crud going on. And I was like, ended up with the day off today and decided to come down to the River Bottom Farm. And we have not had DAC on camera very much. Jerry transferred me the last card pull uh, yesterday. It came through in the middle of the night, so I haven't looked at it, but Jared said Dak was on camera a couple times in the middle of the night. I had him on my camera one night, November 8th. I mean, so he just hasn't really been in here. You know, they, they always end up in here. And when I thought about, I want to kill Marino or Dak, you know, where's the best spot in the morning? You know, even Marino, he's not been right here a bunch, but it's like, it's such a good spot right here on the river where they cruise through. and I'm, we're a couple days past peak breeding in the Midwest, November 15th. And so, you know, you think a lot of these bucks are still locked down and the hunts are gonna be slow. And so I, my confidence really isn't that high this morning. We saw two bucks come in um, kind of early and I spotted one buck down the slough maybe 30 minutes ago, another young one. And we're just sitting here. I'm like, I'm gonna sit at least till 10. And uh, Ryan and I were just talking about life and I heard crunching and I looked back coming back this way that's a great deer I didn't even realize it was Dak right away because all I could see was his right side and his head was down and he just walks in freaking 10 yards <laughs> he's the primary deer I wanted to hunt this year out here you know uh, and I haven't spent a lot of time out here because we're hunting chubs we have lots of history with that deer I'm four and a half five and a half now six and a half this year and couldn't ask for a better season getting chubs down on the home farm and now Dak down. Very, very confident in this shot. Obviously it looked great and he was just spraying blood. So we're gonna call Jared and call some of the other guys and get down and go track him up. All right, girls, you guys wanna follow yes. it? Yes. 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 Go slow. I mean, look at this stuff. Yeah, you see blood right there too? Yeah. Yeah, we're throwing blood right here. My tracking dogs. Back <laughs> there no more. Good job, girls. <laughs> oh man. Look at that thing. Oh my god. What's his name? Dak. Me, Anna, and Brandon all Dak. checked him. Dak. I saw him. Check Anna. She spotted him. I saw his How many days did I hunt him last year? Well, it's hard to put into words how it feels to get Dak on the ground. It was my nemesis last year. You know, after shooting turkey foot early, I spent a lot of time on this farm chasing him. It felt like my hunt for chubs this year, and what a stark contrast. You know, 29 days, 14 different setups on chubs. Finally closed the deal last Wednesday on November 10th. And uh, that really took the pressure off, and I was pretty happy with my season with having chubs on the ground. And, you know, Dak and Marino haven't been that active on this farm. If you guys remember back in the summer, this is 
the deer I really wanted to kill. And uh, if chubs hung around, those would be my two primary targets. And to be successful in getting both those deer on the ground is uh, pretty awesome. And to do it in this way where, you know, a couple sits and, and he walks under the tree, it's uh, what a stark contrast to the chub saga. It's hard to beat that uh, setup in the pinch. I mean, in the rut, you know, my home farm is not really a great rut farm. It's hard to predict where they're gonna move. But down on this farm, I feel like during the rut, if you're sitting in that stand and you can put your time in, you're gonna have a good buck walk by you. And, uh, you know, I, I make, I stew over where to sit every time. Like, wh where's the best place? I think about the last trail camera photos and where might they be or where might they be going. But ultimately it boils down to, you just put yourself in the spot where if they're up on their feet, they're probably gonna walk by. And I, I started to talk earlier about the lockdown. You know, peak breeding here in the Midwest is November 15th. And so a lot of people say the three or four days before and after that is lockdown. And it's a real tough time to sit in the woods for long hours. You have a lot of slow hunts. This is now my fourth buck, I believe, in the last 10 years or so that I've killed in that period. And the idea there is you're catching him between does. He's, he's probably been with the doe the last few days and now he's on his feet looking for the next one. But uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss being in a stand if I had a chance any time in November. And this buck is uh, you know, a six and a half year old deer. Countless encounters with him when he was four and a half. I had three encounters with him last year. And between Jared and I, this is our second encounter this year. Made a great shot on him, he didn't go probably 80 yards. Got to get the kids out here and enjoy a nice track job with them. Easy blood trail to follow and lots of excitement. Speaking of the kids, um, I've had something kind of come up with one of my little boys. <clears throat> my twin boys are they're three and a half. Xander, um, he's been having some problems the last six months with his neck. And uh, anyway, he's got a something called the Chiari malformation. I don't know why it's so hard to get out, but he's got a, he's just got something, a problem with the back of his skull and it's pinching his spine. And it's a pretty bad one. You know, I'm in the medical field, so is my wife, and uh, we kind of picked up on it over the last few months that he was, something was not right, and uh, we ended up getting an MRI last month, and uh, he's got a pretty bad uh, Chiari malformation, it's called, where part of the back part of your cerebellum is pushing through the skull into where the spine goes. And his symptoms are pretty subtle right now. I mean, it's mostly... It's mostly pain when he moves his neck a certain way, but he also has weakness in his hands. And it's just tough. He's gotta have a big surgery. He's having that surgery on um, December 13th, and they're just gonna have to open him up in the back and basically do what's called the decompression. So they're gonna take part of the back of the skull off and try to give him more room so that he can live a normal life and and do well. And so I really just was intending to <laughs> mention that my little boy was gonna have a big surgery and ask you guys for prayers and happy thoughts. And I've said it before, <laughs> you know, hunting is like a escape. It's tree therapy, is what I call it. You get to spend a lot of time just thinking about stuff. And, my wife is just so supportive and she's awesome. She's an angel. I'm lucky to have her. Appreciate all the prayers and thoughts for little Zan Man and that's gonna be December 13th. This is gonna air, this hunt will air sometime at probably early December. And so that'll be just less than a couple weeks ahead of his surgery. And so, you know, I know everything's gonna turn out fine, but I'll take all the extra happy thoughts. So. Moving forward, we're gonna be spending a lot of time with family, just enjoying these next coming weeks and Thanksgiving, and I wish you guys the same. And as always, we appreciate you guys watching, and we hope you enjoyed the hunt. <laughs>